So wait a minute. Let's make sure. Is the microphone That's on? That's how you do it, though. Oh. Okay, but is the microphone on? Is that what's... Hey, guys, I got my, my tech boy over here. So you guys remember when I was telling you last... Oh, my glasses glare. Sorry. Remember I was telling you guys that he had this new way of telling me how to set up the volume on my... Ooh, look at the bags under my eyes. That looks bad. Um, lack of sleep is getting me. So uh, he was telling me how you can change it where you can change your um, microphone modes to make it where there's no background noise, noise. So on the rare occasion when I have my daughter in here with me and something, you know, if something comes up and I have to go live and she's with me, that I could cancel out and she could still sit here and watch her show, but then I don't get in trouble for copyright, um, copyright sounds being in the background of a video because Facebook will shut the video down and delete it and all that kind of stuff if there is any kind of background noise that they believe is um, copyright issues. So um, he was just trying to so we're gonna have to do some research on that because that would be really rad if we could figure that out and get that where we have that you know, flexibility that if something does come up and I need to be able to do a live with her sitting here, she will not be um, having anything infringing on our video. But she still gets to enjoy what she does as well. I see quite a few of you guys popping in here. Let me come in and say hi to you guys. So, hello, Frida. Oops, sorry. Gosh dang it. I moved my camera around and now I'm all backwards. Um, hello, Patty. Hello, Frida. Hello, Peggy. Hello, Rhea. Hello, Susan. Oh, it's so good to see you guys popping in here. Hello, Lois. Hello, Noreen. Yeah, so I'm so sorry I missed you guys. Um, oh, see, there's the other tech guy. <laughs> <laughs> that's the hubby though um he's still not as tech savvy as my son is because god knows teenagers know everything when it comes to tech business so um yeah uh i i, I missed you guys last week um we have an older gen hello arliss we have an older gentleman that um when i because i've told you guys that i work at the hello florence that i work at the local vfw here well being a VFW, we have a lot of veterans that come in there. Well, um, the gentleman that lives with us uh, was homeless. Hello, Anna. And uh, we decided to open up our home and let him live with us. So he lives in one of the spare bedrooms of our home. And he had a pretty, pre like, pretty extensive procedure that he had to have done. He had to have, like, the top part of his neck right here that connects to like his spine and where his neck base is, he had to have a bunch of screws put in there and a rod. So when the doctor on Monday, he had that Monday morning, he had to be there. His surgery was at six o'clock. So he had to be there by 5.30. Um, I have bad reception tonight. Oh no, Peggy. Dang it. Ugh, how's your weather? Is the weather screwing with the internet? Because God knows it happens down here. But no, we're beautiful and in the 90s here and nice and sunny and mild winds. I mean, it, it's nice, but it's hot. Hello, Kay. So when we, when my husband dropped him off or took him into the hospital uh, Monday morning, the, his procedure was scheduled for six. So they were texting me the whole time, letting me know what was going on. So, uh... My husband took him in, waited with him, and then uh, they let me know when they took him back. So 6 o'clock, they let me know that they took him back and got him um, prepped and ready and stuff for his surgery. Well, I was thinking, okay, well, I've had procedures done in the past, so I know it doesn't take that long to get from point A to point B. Well, I didn't get a text until after 8 o'clock in the morning letting me know that they were just getting him back for surgery. Well, then you know that it takes a little bit and that's, they don't just get him going right on the surgery right then and there. Hello, Lois. They don't like start the procedure right away because then they've got to do, you know, anesthesia. And because of the fact that he's got a pacemaker, they have to have a heart doctor in there with him and all the good things. So they had told us uh, that the surgery would be anywhere between four to five hours. So of course, the whole time you're just like constantly looking at your phone, waiting for that text message that 
he's all good. He's in recovery. And so finally, at God, I would, I want to say, well, he went in eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, one. It was probably because I think my husband got off at three. So when my husband got home, I think I had told him, I was like, I haven't heard anything from the doctor yet. And then almost like maybe 10, 15 minutes later, they had called, the doctor actually called me and told me that the surgery went excellent. He couldn't have asked for a better outcome and that he got everything cleaned up. He cloned, cleaned up all the bone and all the, you know, fragments and stuff that were back there and that it turned out wonderful. So uh, we picked him up from the hospital on, I think it was Thursday or Friday, and now he is doing great. He's up walking around, and I'm just like, wow, I, he has to wear a, a clav, uh, cervical, cervical something. It looks like a, a neck brace, I guess you would call it. A cervical something. I don't know exactly what it's called, but hope he is better. I had had it done twice wow Lois you had it done twice oh my goodness well yeah that's Charlie the guy that lives with us he would he was asking he was asking the doctor when he got out of recovery he said he goes did you guys take pictures while you were doing it because I would love to see what's in my body now and they had told him that next time when he comes in and he has his uh um like post-op or whatever they call it then and they'll do another set of x-rays that they'll show him exactly what it looks like inside of his body and everything so we're kind of looking forward to seeing that because i'm i'm always interested in that kind of stuff i just think medicine is or not medicine but surgery and that kind of stuff is just very fascinating hello terry um so yeah I, I, he's doing i mean way better than what i would have totally expected him to be doing and up walking around and getting up and going to the bathroom and all those things. And it just, it blows my mind because myself, even though I've had three children and two of those were C-sections and I know that's not a big deal because everybody has them, but I am a wimp when it comes to pain, like no joke, a cervical collar. That's what it's called, Patty. I was waiting for you to chime in because you and I had just had this talk. Um, so I am a, I am such a chicken. Like I, I honestly amaze myself that I went through with having three kids. <laughs> I, I hate pain. I don't do pain very well. Hello, Shaz. And the, the funny thing is from the UK, what, what time is it in the UK right now? Because it being six o'clock here, Arizona time in the U S I'm very curious to know, and I'm sure you're probably, what, a day ahead of us? Hmm, curious to see what your answer is on that one. So, um, uh, where was I going with that? So, he's doing great, and uh, and I'm a chicken, so I hope to God I don't. 2, 10 a.m., wow, you are a trooper. That is, thumbs up for you. <laughs> for being up crazy hours of the day of the night or I guess morning oh yeah I am I, I really am Peggy like honest to God I am such a chicken when it comes to pain like it's almost kind of embarrassing but <laughs> I mean it is what it is I suppose so I can't deny what it is <laughs> when when it's truly that way hello Carol so, okay, so that was kind of my news on why I missed you guys last week. It, it was kind of one of those things that I thought I could do it, and that's why I didn't cancel it until a little bit later in the day. Um, but then just kind of that nerve-wracking, waiting for the doctors to call and not knowing, you know, if we needed to go down there and, you know, visit with him or whatever when he was coming out of recovery. So I just thought, you know what, I was going to call it safe than sorry and just make that, you know, decision right then and there to not be with you guys last week but that being said the cards that you guys have won from the previous week so from um the 11th the cards that we made on the 11th are going to be the cards for the giveaway today um that being said those were some easter cards so i apologize that they're coming to you guys whoever the winner is they're coming to you guys late but hey guess what 
you know, it's never too late to send a card or you can always put those in your stash for next year to have those already ready that they can get sent out um, in the mail and not have to wait on Easter cards. Hello, Sharon. So um, a couple of things. I got my, uh, my new paper pumpkin. It came perfectly on time. This is the Change is Beautiful. So I will be doing the alternatives on Thursday, this Thursday. Uh, this is the one that came with those amazing butterflies. And there's like a caterpillar here. And you know what is so cool with this? And I am so stinking excited. My daughter is actually doing, um, so for you guys who don't know, I do Montessori with my daughter. Um, because Montessori is really, really awesome when it comes to a special needs child. So we went ahead and decided to do that for her um, education. Right now we're actually doing the study of butterflies and, and the life cycle of a butterfly. So uh, it's really cool because during Easter, in her Easter basket, she got a full uh, live thing of caterpillars and a an, an, uh, habitat for the butterflies when they change and do their chrysalis and all that kind of stuff. So they've actually, they're all hanging now. And I've been taking pictures of the stages of what they're going through. So I am so excited to do a scrapbook page because you guys know how I love to try to do a scrapbook page with our paper pumpkin. So I'm going to do the, try to do something that goes along with the life cycle of a butterfly and then have some pictures with her in there. I won't have the pictures, you know, as of Thursday because we're not going to have butterflies by that time. But, um, I'm going to start taking pictures of like when they start hatching and they start coming out and uh, letting her hold some of those butterflies. I just think that would be, I mean, how cool is that that you could look back into a scrapbook page and see what you, you know, you got to experience that. So I'm really excited. And this kit was just right up, you know, the alley on that one. So that worked out totally perfect. What a spring, you know, wonderful, cool thing. All right, so you guys, um, I had shown a picture earlier in the week of uh, us doing that. Uh, I'm going to call it a pocket card, but this is a pocket card holder. Um, I have already taken a couple of pictures of this actual one here, and I've put a couple of different direction things on there over on the blog. I have actually um, some of the cards. Uh, this will be actually on the blog. And then there's always PDFs to the cards that we make. So you can just go in there and you can click that. It'll be a little square and it's got a little chicken on it. And it says, want to make this? And when you click on that, it'll take you into the PDF. So you will have the file on how to make the cards. So the one that is in there currently, we're going to make it in a different color today. But nonetheless, it's the same card, just uh, I have different colors, but we're going to make this card here. Um, like I said, it's in a different color scheme, but it's the same exact layout. So uh, you guys can grab the PDF over on there. It's going to take me a little bit because um, I have to download this video when we're done to my uh, computer and then upload it over to uh, YouTube which sometimes that process can be very, very timely. Now, I don't have the strongest internet because I do live very rural here in Tucson, Arizona. Um, so, you know, bear with me. Also, on that note that I just saw this sitting here, um, we had mystery stamping on Wednesday. Oh, my ear is ringing. We had mystery stamping on Wednesday and... Uh, a couple of you guys went ahead and joined that. And the winner, I went to announce the winner yesterday, yesterday, so, yeah, Sunday. And for some reason, I don't think, I think I messed up and I didn't hit the, you know, when you hit, like, especially if I'm doing it off of my computer, if I don't hit the enter button, it doesn't add it to the thing. Now, if I'm doing it for my phone, I don't have to go through all those steps. It just automatically, when I write it and then I go to hit the button, it pops it up there. But on my computer, there's an extra step where I have to hit the finish or the enter. I don't remember what the bottom thing is. I'm pretty sure I forgot to do that because I'm used to doing it on my phone. But I do have it posted over there. I did it this morning because I did go in and see that I did it didn't post. So 
This is the ephemera pack. Um, the, uh, it's called the Expressions in Ink Ephemera Pack. It's a brand new pack. This is going to Miss Frida Alsep. She won the mystery stamping. So every month, if you go over to my events page here in the Stamp in the Pink Barn, on this page here, you can see in my events that every month I have a mystery stamping. If you go into the events, it will tell you all the things about it, and it will even take you to, you know, from the previous ones, it'll take you to the link um, on my blog from the past mystery stamping, so you can kind of see what it's all about. And there's actually the replay videos on there, so you can see how they're done. You can make cards and have layouts at that point in time. So that will be going to Miss Frida. Congratulations, girl. I love seeing your guys' cards on there because not only does it inspire other people on Pink Barn Stampers group, but it also inspires me because then I see the colors that you guys come up with. And then since I belong to other groups and stuff, then I can kind of pick off of your guys' ideas because, come on, let's all just be honest here. I, I can't always come up with everything on my own. That's why I need you guys. I need your help as well. So... All right, let's get you guys flipped around. I've got all my stuff sitting back here behind me, and we will get this going. All right, hold on, you guys. sure I got this thing sitting in the right spot. Kind of move it down a little bit. Hold on just a second. Let me move this down just a skosh. It looks like it's awfully high up in the air. And I want you guys to be able to see the cards tonight and not see just space. Okay, I think that is good. Okay, so the upcoming paper pumpkin that is going right now is called the celebrating in color. Now this one has all of our current in colors in the color scheme of this one. So I will show you here's that here's the one that I made and I took the picture of it to show you guys um, what we were going to be making today. So this is that um, Orchard Oasis is this color. So it's kind of like a purplish tint because then when you look at this one, which is the starry sky, you can really see the difference between this blue and this purpley color. So see if I flip it over, you can really see the contrast difference there. Beautiful colors that they have come out with this year. And they all, thank you so much, Kay, for sharing my video. You are a rock star girl. All right, so this one, um, the colors coordinate very, very well together. So then we have the Tunisian Tide, which is kind of like a turquoise color. Then we have the, this is called Sweet Sorbet. Let me flip it over so you can kind of really see that color. Let me show you this one too. But I'm going to show you guys how to make this layout because it's a really fun and easy. Thank you so much, Patty. That you guys... Sharing this video helps me so much with, you know, when we're we're starting a business, it really um, helps a lot to get other people to see this. And it helps with the algorithm of how Facebook kind of throws this video out there. So you sharing it to your page does amazing things for me and helps me so much. And it actually enters you into the drawing for one of the cards. Okay, so this one is called, and my adhesive is not sticking down over here, but we're going to make another one of these in a different color, but I will have you know, the one that is posted on my blog is this one because it was just saving me some time to go ahead and get all the pictures of this already up there. So it's less steps that I have to go through once we're done with this. This one is called the Parakeet Party, and it is a very beautiful, bright and lime and cheery color. And it really, again, goes very beautifully with these cards. So let me kind of flip this over and kind of show you all five of those colors together so you can really see that they go beautifully together. I am going to show you guys a couple different layouts. I'm going to show you how to make the pocket 
And then I'm gonna make a couple different cards showing you how easy it is to make um, different layouts to put inside of one of these pockets. And these make excellent little gifts. But those are the colors that they are showing in this celebrating in color paper pumpkin. I know I went off kind of on a tangent because I'm very squirrel as you guys know. So bear with me. <laughs> and you guys are amazing with doing that. So um, it says create magic with the new 2022 2024 um, in colors with this paper pumpkin kit with vivid pops of green and red and a range of blues these colors are perfect for fun festives plus you can also send gift cards with the included coordinating gift card holder so that's pretty cool that it has you know I, I'm not sure exactly how it's gonna look but there's gift card holders in these it says it contains enough supplies to create 10 cards to each of five designs plus 10 coordinating envelopes and 10 coordinating gift card holders. Send joy and excitement to friends, family, co-workers, and anyone, anyone who makes your life happy. Features the new 2022-2024 in colors and includes an exclusive stamp set and a basic gray stamped spot stamp and spot so in each paper pumpkin you're always going to get an exclusive stamp set or stamp pad it's a little tiny one and it works great with if you flip your stamp upside down dabbing the back of your stamp because if you hold it like this sometimes you miss let me grab i know this is a paper pumpkin uh, block right here so if you take your stamp and you go like this Sometimes you miss the side of your stamp and then when you go to stamp it, ugh, it didn't work, right? It didn't get on that area that you wanted because part of the stamp didn't have ink. So if you flip it over with your stamp image on the side and then take your ink and you go this way with it, then you make sure you can see that all of your stamp is inked up. So that's a good way to know and work with these little tiny spots. And you get to collect all the colors as well in those. And those make great um, additions when you're going on crafting camps or to swaps or anything like that. You can take these with you and not have to carry a big, huge thing with your full-size stamp sets. Okay, so that is the one that is currently going. And this is um, available through May 10th for you to subscribe. There are links right here in the description of this video that will... You know get you into knowing how to do that and all the things about paper pumpkin also one of the cool things that they've decided to do this month is you know Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory right and you know all about the golden ticket well they're calling this the golden voucher it says every May paper pumpkin subscriber will get the chance to win a golden voucher worth $25 in Stampin up products now, if you're in Canada, you will win a $35 certificate voucher, just to let you know that. The winner will find their golden voucher in their May 2022 paper pumpkin box. Good luck. All right, so that's kind of just an extra little incentive for you. Also, that what I have going on right now, and this is going to go, I'm going to put the order in on May 3rd, but I have it running through the 1st of May just to make sure everybody gets their payments into me. So then I will know how much paper to order on May 3rd. Uh, but this is the annual catalog paper share from our 2022 2022 2023 annual catalog. So the new catalog that starts on May 3rd. I will be ordering all the paper, um, but that's why I have to have you guys who have requested this uh, paper share pay me by, I think I said by May 1st, um, so I can get all that paper ordered and cut up and get put inside of the little uh, clear sheets that, what are you looking for? There's movies right down there. Right in the kit down there. Yeah, I think that one's got the more current ones. Um, so you will know that um, you will be in on that. So make sure your payment is in to me by May 4th. Now, I did send out the PayPal, PayPal um, 
invoices on the 24th. But that doesn't mean that you still can't get in on this. So if you would like this, I have a link in um, over on my blog. It's actually at the top. You're going to see the name of my blog at the very top. And then right down below, you're going to see a little thin row. It's going to say annual catalog paper share. If you click that tab, the tab that's next to it says home. So move over just a little bit and arrow over that and click on that. And it will take you into all the details for this. So the thing that's really cool is this, you will get your hands on all the designer series paper from the new catalog, but only pay $55 because you're going to be getting a sample. So you're going to get a quarter of a pack of each one of the papers um, in your little thing here. And it tells you exactly what papers are included in this share and what you're paying for with the $55. Okay. So go over there and check that out because it is an excellent way to get your hands on all the beautiful paper because, you know, it's just the way, you know, when you look at the catalog, it doesn't always do our paper justice. And it, and nine times out of 10, it doesn't do it justice at all, especially when you have a lot of those specialty papers in there. And once you feel the textures of those papers and you feel the quality of the paper, it really kind of changes your mind. And, you know, the colors are a lot more vivid when it's in person as well, okay? Also, I've got my adhesive kits still available. And I'm probably always going to keep these um, because I, I think they're really kind of a handy thing to have. Um, they come in one of these little mesh bags here. You will get a sand eraser, an adhesive eraser, a full pack of glue dots, which will come in a box. I think I actually have a box of them. Oh, no, I don't because I just opened my box and put a brand new one in here because I used my other one. But these roll off. And if you can see right here, there's a glue dot. There's a whole track of glue dots on here. Then we've got Terran tape. You'll get a brand new package of Terran tape. This comes in a big clear bag. Uh, do I have any of those laying here? I don't have any of those either. But you'll get that. Oh, I do have an adhesive kit. Oh, um, nope, they're in my thing because I took them to my class because I was selling them there too. So then you're going to get a six by six or a six inch clear ruler, which is amazing. So when you're looking at things you'll be able to see right through it to know where your paper ends you're going to get a full pack of many dimensionals so the, those are these tiny ones right here you're going to get a full pack of those and then you're going to get a full pack of that's not going to do you any good you're going to get a full pack of the large ones as well and you're going to get a bottle of the i call it the green glue but it's the um multi-purpose uh, liquid glue this is my go-to because I love liquid glue because it gives me a, a few minutes to have some wiggle room in there instead of having to, you know, when you use a, a tape runner or anything, sometimes, you know, once you put that down, you're kind of committed and you can't really pick it up and move it. Um, you will get in the large, you get 300 of those big uh, dimensionals and then in the smaller pack let me see I do have a smaller pack um, this one is open but you will get a brand new one and you're gonna get 720 of this of the mini ones okay so really really great deal and again it's all in that bag for you and then you can throw you know if you have your take your pick tool throw it in there throw a pair of snips in there then you're good to go Okay, right now, this is my current host code for the month of April. So use this code when you are purchasing with me and you're shopping in my store. So when you come to the end of your um, shopping cart, if your order is under $150, please use this host code. You will find this in the comments or in the comments in the description of this video. You will also find it up at the top right hand corner of my blog and it's in every one of my blog posts because it does change monthly. So make sure you're watching the month that you're, if you're on a blog post from a couple of months ago, but you're making a purchase with me, make sure you are watching that top corner to make sure you're sticking the right one of those in there. But that helps me immensely to bring you guys all those free gifts that I give away to everyone and help you guys get entered in the things. If your order is over $150, do not use my host code because you are going to get your own rewards for shopping with me. Okay. Also, 
the big thing is make sure you're always shopping with me unless you're your own demonstrator then you're gonna have your name up there but if you're a customer please use um, the links that I have provided for you guys or if you can't find any of my links and you go into stampinup.com um, you can always type my name in there Danny Garola but to get to my store go to dannygarola.stampinup.net that will take you right into my website that will take you over and you can even join my team from there there's a bunch of different things that you can look I have an events calendar on there that you can look at um, but to get to my blog all you need to do is go to stampinthepinkbarn.com that will take you right to my blog okay I'll leave that there for you guys especially those of you that are new to me and then you can you know pop in there when we're done here all right so let's go straight in to making let's make let's make this little pocket because it's really super simple and I think you guys are really gonna enjoy making this okay so what you're gonna need to do is you are gonna need a full sheet of cardstock so this is 11 by eight and a half <clears throat> you're gonna need either your oh see I almost lost oh dang it I just lost my little, my little thing on there ah well hopefully I don't run it over with my chair and break it but I had the little thing set up on here to make sure where I needed to score this ah well dang it Oh, there it is. I found it. I found it. Okay, I'm going to put this back at the two quarter, two and a quarter where I need that. Okay, and let's try not to lose that. I have the other two in the little, because up here in this top thing, this is called the Simply Scored Board. And up here in the top, when you get this, you're going to get three of these little marker things right here that just kind of clip into this little piece here. Now, I keep my other ones in here when I'm not using them because otherwise they would be lost. Okay. So really simple. All you need to do is do two different, remember two different scores for this. So when you have this on the 11 inch side, what you're going to do is you're going to score this right in half at five and a half. just like that okay that's how we would score a 11 inch card or anything like that to make that half mark on there now you're gonna turn it 90 degrees and now you're on the eight and a half side this is that parakeet party if you were wondering what this color was I was pretty sure you guys probably caught on to that now you're gonna go to the two and a quarter and you're gonna score there okay so on the 11, you're going to do it at five and a half right in the center. And then from the eight and a half, you're going to do it at two and a quarter. Okay, now you're going to come and you're going to fold all your score lines. I'm going to get this big guy out of the way because it does take up a whole lot of space there. Okay, and then I'm going to grab my bone folder because we want to make sure this has a really nice crease on it. The other thing you are going to need is you're going to need a hole punch. Now, this is like 150 years old. No, just joking. It's not that old. But you guys have probably seen one of these, and mine's very dusty and dirty and whatever, but it does its purpose. This, I think, was called a cropodile. I think that's what I can remember. Like I said, I've had it for a long, long time, but nonetheless, it still does its job. So I don't even know if these things are still available, but if they are, and if you already have one, then you know you already know how to use the thing. But this thing has two different sizes on it, so I'm gonna use the bigger side to make the holes in this, just to let you know if that's what you're using. And then we're going to do this. You can use a just a regular paper hole punch too. That works just as well. Anything that has a hole punchy thingy on it, And I've even provided a template to show you guys exactly how to make the holes so they all line up perfectly. Okay, so now when you look at this, you're going to see 
that you have the smaller part down here and then you've got the center here. Now, when I've written out the directions, I say you're gonna cut a V at the intersection. Well, what I mean by that is this is your intersection right here. Okay, so what you're going to want to do is first find scissors. And I'm going, no, I need to hold it this way. So I'm going to kind of come, I'm not measuring, I'm completely eyeballing this. So I'm gonna come out maybe about a half of an inch from this center score line here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pretty much, I'm not gonna draw, well, I can use a pencil and draw on this because then you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm pretty much gonna go over eyeballing it a half an inch and then I'm just gonna cut all the way up. I know I can't cut, I can't draw straight to save my soul, but my scissors do a pretty good job of cutting straight. Thank God for scissors, okay? So I'm just gonna go right up to that center intersection there. And then what I do to make it look a little bit more symmetrical, because like I just said, I'm not good at eyeballing things and making it straight. I'm just gonna kind of hold my finger up here and I know this is kind of fiddly and wonky. And then I'm just gonna cut this side, kind of watching that, that's that little fold over there to make sure I kind of get it semi straight. Now, nobody's gonna care because they're gonna be so in awe over your cards. They're not gonna care that your V is a little crooked, just saying. That could have been very nasty and I will keep my mind out of the gutter, but anyways. <clears throat> so, there is your simple little V out of there. And the only reason why we did that is so now this can close and not get all hung up on if this was here, this would kind of like make things complicated and rippled and it just wouldn't close as nicely. So that's how that works. That's it. That is your pocket. That, that was rough, huh? <laughs> okay. The other part that I put on the, the blog to show you, now you're going to have to make your own template because there's really no, I mean, you could measure or whatever, but it's kind of, you're going to look at it. I just did this to just kind of show you how I made a template to make sure my center circles match my outside circle so they're all the same so my ribbon's not going like this because as I said I cut very crooked so the reason why I mean this template was to make all my circles match now I'm going to show you how to do it to make it a lot easier to follow so when I put this template on there I had said that you need to cut a piece of ribbon depending on how big you want your bow you're going to cut it between 22 inches and 24 inches just depends on how big you want the bow over here to tie it. Now I simply took this and I kind of eyeballed the middle and I cut a or punched a hole out of the center. That was it. That was all I did out of this small little piece of and this right here I'm it is five and a half by four and a quarter. So it is a standard size card base. This is going to be bigger than our card base. This base now is five and a half by six and a quarter. So that's why all your four cards that you're going to put inside of here are going to fit in here without being clumpy. And since you're going to have to, you know, kind of subtract for the ribbon that goes through, it works really good for your cards. And I'll show you that, the other one that we have made with all four cards in there so you can see how nicely it closes. Okay, so I wrote on the bottom here I said right bottom this is going to be your front where I have written on there and now if I look in here I can see that my flap is kind of about a half an inch below where I'm going to punch my hole so like I said I'm going to use the big side here and I'm just going to slide this in there line it up with the hole and punch okay so there is the hole that I needed out of the center of this. Now, if I take this and completely flip it over, now this says backside bottom left corner. So if I put that over here and do that same exact thing, 
I'm going to line up perfectly this time as I did on the other side. So see, now my holes are completely straight. Does that make sense to you guys? I hope that totally makes sense because that was the best way it made sense to me to make sure you got your, your uh, holes lined up correctly. Okay, then you're gonna take, my ribbon is, I think mine was 24 inches. Let me see. I'm gonna fold it in half and tell you guys what it was. Now the nice thing with this white crinkle seam ribbon, you can use your blends marker and make it whatever color you want. So say for instance, you were using Bumblebee. Now I know that's kind of a hard one to say because the fact that Bumblebee is being retired, but it was just one that came to my mind that I know that we don't have a coordinating um, blends to go with it. But I could take my, um, uh, or I don't know why I said the blends. Jeez Louise. Um, you could take one of our color, like I could even use my uh, Dark Mango Melody or I could use my Daffodil Delight and I could blend that on here to make it look like it was Bumblebee. And then I could have some ribbon that matched my thing. So for like instance, for this, I could come in with my parakeet party and I could run it across this piece and I can make it match my paper. But we do have some amazing ribbon right now that match all of our new in colors. So you guys will be able to get your hands on this come May, what did I say? Third was when the catalog starts you will be able to get this. Now this would be extremely gorgeous on that. Can you see that? But I just did want to show you, you know, depending on what colors you're using, this is always the go-to when it comes to uh, being able to match all your colors. All right, so I'm going to put this, go from the back in, because this is what's gonna hold your cards in place, then go back through the back side and then back in. Okay, like that. And then now wind back through here. Okay, just like that. Now, you probably wanna turn this and make it straight. Now what I did on the other one that I will show you really quick is I took a little dab of glue and I ran it down the sides here, not the insides, but just the outside, and I just glued those. It's completely optional. You don't have to do it. Your cards are gonna stay in place because of the ribbon that you have here, okay? So that is what that is going to look like. We're gonna actually make the front of this. So I'm gonna take this back off of here and put it back in here because I'm gonna show you with all the cards in this one what I mean and then we're gonna show I'm gonna show you a couple of different layouts of cards that make really really good kits or uh, gifts to go in these pockets gotta tell you guys I was gone for one week off of here and I feel like I am so miscombobulated you guys you guys feeling me God, you take a day off and you're all sorts of screwed up. All right, so this is what I was talking about, depending on how big you want your bow over here. But let me show you. Let me get a couple of these cards in here. And I haven't done anything with the envelopes because I figured I would do that with you guys. Slide this underneath there and then grab two more cards, two more envelopes, and slide those in there. And now see, when you go to close this, and tie this up, and here I go with my wonderful bow making skills. Ha! You guys know me, right? This could be, could be bad. Okay, or it could be okay. We'll roll with it. Okay, you get what I'm trying to do there. Okay, there's a bow. 
So see, those things are not going to go anywhere and I'm not like squeezing that or anything. I'm holding it at the end to let you know, yes, my little envelope's coming out, but what a cool little gift. All right, let's go ahead and get started on that front, showing you the the piece that I made right here and how I've made every single one of these cards. Because all of them have the same exact bases. All I've done was taken this white piece right here. And like I said, this is the one that you're gonna see the photo of over on the blog. So what I have done is I have come in with my card base, which, what color did I decide to do today? Oh. I guess I didn't pick a color yet. Hold on. Let me grab, hmm, what do I got going on here? Well, I have another, we're going to go with this one because I already have this sitting here. Okay, so this is our card base. This is eight and a half by five and a half. And we are going to just fold it again in half. Because then we'll kind of keep those two things kind of matching. And then I'm going to show you, I'm not going to actually adhere it on here, but I want to show you how it works on both pieces here. Okay. So this piece here is four by five and a quarter. Now, I don't know why I had to measure that, but in my mind, it just wasn't working. <clears throat> now what I took, <clears throat> where did I put my little thingy? Oh, here it is. Okay, so you're going to need, this is the 2022-2024 in colors. Now, this paper is so fun, you guys. I love the new, the new designs that they've put on these. It is so neat. So, look, there's this red that has, like, these little stripes on it. And then the back side has, like, little flowers. And then the second piece is more of like this striped. And then the back side is polka dot. Isn't that so cool? Oh, I just love it. So let's grab out the, ye the, the yellow, the parakeet party. Actually, you know what? This piece might work just fine right here. Okay, so what you're going to need is you're going to need your trimmer to cut yourself some designer series paper. Now, we're going to be using both sides. So what you're going to do is you're going to cut two pieces at one by four. So I'm just going to cut myself some one inch strips here. But this one here, I'm going to cut at four. And I don't throw any of my little scraps away because I just, that's how I roll. And then there's another one at four. And then let me grab the other print that I had. Because we're using that print. And I'm going to cut one more one inch strip off of this. Okay, and then this needs to be now from this piece here, you need two pieces at one, which we just cut and two and three quarters. So you can get both of those out of so you're going to need to cut yourself three one inch strips from your uh, designer series paper and then cut two of them at four inches and then one of them two and three quarters and two and three quarters so there's a two and three quarters and here's a two and three quarters I mean you can cut it how you want to but that's just kind of less less waste the way I the way I did it so you can figure out how to do it okay now what I did is I need to get out. I decided to bring in this new set. This is called Sending Smiles. And again, this will be available on May 3rd when the new catalog goes live. Now this set, I've already seen so many cards being made with this. Like this is like a huge hit 
um, in the stamping community. You've got this really neat, uh, this is kind of like a border or a shadow. And then you've got the really intricate sending part. And then you've got all these different sayings that go with this word sending. Smiles across the miles, all the good luck your way, sunshine to brighten your day, love and big hugs, birthday wishes, a note of thanks, a card to say hello, and comfort and strength. Do you see how across the, you know, the board these sayings go? So this is going to be so awesome for all your different occasions of cards. And it's really neat to be able to stamp this and then cut out that big sending in the two different like fonts. Because like I said, this is like going to be your big shadow. Then you've got all these different kinds of flowers that all kind of coordinate together. So what I am going to do with this is I'm going to take, now you can lay this any way you want. Here's kind of what this one looked like. So if I wanted to, I could either do my two big ones, one over here and one over here, or I can do it opposite and go here. And then these two pieces, I'm going to flip over my shorter pieces and go this way and this way, just to kind of make this one different to show you different ways of making this. Just like that, I'm going to kind of frame in that white piece. Now, let's stamp some of the, the pieces that we need here. So I'm going to take this little piece here, which if you can see that, it's kind of like the smaller stem right here. And use that on my card. And then I need to grab the head of the flower, which I'm using this flower right here, which is the same one you can see right there. Okay, let's do the flower in, I kind of like that, Tahitian. We're going to do Tahitian Tide. Now, the reason, oh, there's little fuzzies everywhere. The reason why I go ahead and I set everything up on here is because I like to make sure when I go to stamp my flower that I'm not hiding any of my flower underneath my border or my frame, whatever you want to call it. So I'm just going to take this flower and just kind of stamp it, kind of tilt it so my, my uh, stem will kind of come down and around just like that. Oh, look at that color. Oh, beautiful. Then I'm going to grab the parakeet party. And this is where I'm going to move this piece right here because I don't want to wind up stamping on that if I get close to it. Now, it looks like I would have been okay leaving it but to be on the safe side, I would rather move that one. Okay, so that's going to go like that. Aren't those colors just oh, gorgeous? All right, now let's do that little flower stamen part. And I stuck my, let me see, did I put my other ink in there? I think I'm going to use the soft sorbet for the inside of that flower. And that is this little, I think it's called a stamen. I think that's what that part of the flower is called. Okay, just like that. All right, now all you have to do is glue these pieces. Watching your margins of your white card layer.
Make sure I put glue on the right side because God only knows. I've done that before. Got in a hot fire hurry and screwed myself up and stuck the glue on the wrong side of, of my paper. Struggle to be real. All right, then with this, you can make this in all your different in colors, especially if you are a demonstrator or you're part of my team and you're trying to show off these colors. This is a great way of showing off all of those new colors. Then all you would need to do is you would grab your either your pocket and then this just goes right in the center of that pocket just like that or here's your card base and it just goes right on the front of your card base so do you see how stinking cool that is to do so the reason why I was using these two is because I'm gonna now show you some different layouts that all you have to do is just change up this piece to get some different cards to do in one of these pockets okay so that is the first design that you're going to see. And then what, you know, what else you could do is you could come in here with those really cool, um, the 2022-24 in color matte decorative dots. And because of the fact of the red dot in the center, we could either come in with that uh, sweet sorbet and add some of those in there. I was actually thinking of you know, maybe bringing in that next color and put the little bow on there. I don't know. I don't know if I like it with the bow. I don't know if that just takes away from it, but uh, I was kind of on the fence with that, but I do love this. And like I said, it would be great to use that as your um, tying ribbon around your, your uh, pocket. Um, it might be neat to even bring in some of this tr tr uh, Tahitian Tide. And I think, I think I'm going to use some of these. Now, do you see how cool these are? These are like an ombre colored form. So see how they go really dark over here. That is more of the true color. And then as they go across, they get lighter in color. I think that is so cool. Now that really goes well with our new in color ombre um, glimmer paper. They don't call it ombre, but as you can see, it is very much ombre. Now that is in all five colors as well. And it is so shimmery and so pretty. Next week, we're gonna be playing with this. I just had to show you this pocket thing because I thought what a cool gift that is. Look at those colors and look at the shine. Isn't that, oh, gorgeous. So it has that ombre effect that goes really well with these dots. Uh, what was I doing? Okay, then I'm gonna come in with another small one and maybe just put that right there. Okay. So then those are complete. Like I said, you can make it in all five colors and then add those to the bases of your cards. And then you're gonna have one of these that you're going to have to figure out the color that you're going to do for your pocket. Okay. So let me get that part out of the way. And so I will be making the three cards that will be for the winners of, for this week's, um, uh, liking, commenting, and sharing this video. I will complete the cards. You're going to see, like I said, on the blog, you're going to see these in different colors on there. It's still going to be in colors, but not, not this particular parakeet party. It is the, I believe it's the starry sky, the one that I posted, but nonetheless, it's the same layout and it's the same, um, dimensions. And that's what you guys need to be making these. And let me clean these off really quick. So I don't wind up having any boo-boos and stick cards down. All right. The next one that we're going to be playing with is from another new set, which is the cup of tea. I am in love with this set. You guys, I have been playing with it and making cards and I'm going to show you a couple of different ones, but the one that I'm going to show you 
is going to be the one that is going to be going on this. All right, so let's get out. I am actually going to be using, this is the um, Orchard, uh, what did I say it was? Orchard Oasis? Yep. The Orchard Oasis is the one that I'm going to be using with this. I thought I was going to be doing this one, but I think it'll be neat to kind of just show you a different color. But nonetheless, you'll see what I'm talking about as the card bases that you can just change it up. Okay, so let me show you this paper. This is called the D, the blah, T Boutique paper. This paper is stunning, again, with all of our paper. This one is actually included, if I could get it out of this thing, this one is included in the paper share. So there's that, look at that. So the front side of these has all this tea theme on it. Look at those lemons with that green, that's garden green in there. Then you've got some flourishes here. Some more teacups. Now this is one of our, this is one of the papers that features all the in colors. Not all of our papers are gonna do that, but this is one that does. And I'll flip these over to show you the flip side in just a second because the flip side is gonna be, this side is more florally and tea um, associated, and the next side is going to be, so let me flip this over. Look at it, it's more of like an abstract um, color to it. That is that Tahitian Tide. I'm pretty sure that is, that's gotta be, what are they calling that one? because bumblebee is going away. So that's crushed curry, beautiful yellow. That's some of that starry sky. Let me move a little bit faster here. I'm trying to decide as I'm looking at these. So the reason why I'm kind of going through these is to see which one I want to do on here. But I think I'm going to, I'm going to do this one because I've already got it cut and I already know kind of what measurements I need for that. Um, I need a, oh, shoot. I need a piece of white and we're going to do the white for this one is going to be a piece of basic white. It needs to be at three and three quarters by five. Okay, so it, we're going to see more of that blue on this card. We're going to see more of the blue around it. It's not just going to be a quarter of an inch because I really like to see more of the cardstock because it really makes that pop. All right, then we're gonna need to cut our designer series paper. I'm going to do one and three quarters by three and three quarters because that's the size of this. So one and three quarters. By three and three quarters. And then that way we're seeing those little teacups. And again, super, super easy layout, but and can be done in all these different uh, colors and designs. That's just gonna go on the bottom, that's it. That's pretty much this card. Besides the fact that now we're going to do a little bit more adding some things to this card. All right, let me get a scrap piece of this. So I'm just gonna cut, you're gonna need a little scrap of the same color of your card base, which we're using the or, uh, Orchard Oasis. So that's what this is. And now we need Orchard Oasis ink and some 
garden green because that is this green that's in this. <clears throat> so what I need for this is I'm going to use this stamp set. Do you see this? How adorable is this stamp set? And it's got dies. Woohoo! So not only does it have paper, but this is a whole sweet collection. So it has the bundle, <clears throat> which is the stamps and the dies. It's got this paper and it has um, some, some card bases and envelopes matching. I actually have those, but they're over at my mom's house. So I wasn't able to see her this weekend to go get those from her. But I will show you as soon as I get those in my possession. All right. So... Oh, here's my, I was going to say, where did my stamps go? They're over here waiting for me. So here is my little cup that I'm going to use. Here is my greenery. And it even comes with flowers that stamp right inside of that greenery. And then I'm going to use the words that say, take care of yourself. Now there's so many different sayings in this set, which are so cool. You've even got some really small ones up here that really kind of can make a really cute set of cards to give these as gifts. You've got to thank you. You've got to take care of yourself. Let's get together soon. And then here's a big thank you. This one says, thank you for your friendship. Sweet, I miss you. I just can't thank you enough. Enjoy, it's tea time and to and from. So do you see this like little tea bag? Um, what is that, the little label that sticks out of the side of your, your tea cup? That would be so neat to put like a to and from and then write who you're giving this to. Or you can put all, any of these little small sayings fit perfect on that little tag that hangs off the side of the little tea bag. So could you imagine the cute little things that are gonna come out of this? So with this, I'm using tone on tone. So I'm using the Orchard Oasis paper along with Orchard Oasis ink for my little cup. Now look how pretty this turns out when you stamp tone on tone. Giving that a little bit of time to soak in to that cardstock because since our white kind of pulls color a little bit easier than a thicker cardstock like our colored stuff, give it a couple of seconds to soak into that so you get the full potential of you need a piece of twine to attach the tag. Absolutely, girl. We do have all the twine in our in colors. I happened to fail on ordering that. I missed it. And I could kick myself really hard, but we do have a twine pack that is coming out that goes with all five of these colors. It is twine, so it's like that really, really thin, you guys know what twine is, but it's like this and it comes on these rolls and it's in every one of these colors. It's white with this color in it. So I'm in, when as soon as I make my paper order, it's gonna be on that order. It's already, I've already got it on my list to get that because I was like, dang it, I need to have that. So I'm gonna use the plain cup. There is one of the cups that actually has this design on it that is really neat to do as an overlay, but I thought I'm just gonna do the plain cup here and cut that out. So let me cut that out really quick for you guys. So hopefully you guys have started getting your guys' catalogs in. I know I've had a couple of people tell me that they have already received their catalogs. So woo -hoo, that is so awesome because it is full of beautifulness. So if you haven't got yours yet, just know that um, it is on its way. Okay, so look how cool that cup is. Isn't that so cute? So that is actually going to go right here, but I'm going to glue this down so I know where my paper ips and let's make sure we turn it the right way so I'm taking the kids to the fair tomorrow we have the fair has been um, postponed for the last 
I just received it a week. Oh, awesome. Good. I'm glad, Cheryl, that you got your catalog. Um, where I'm taking my um, kids to the fair tomorrow. Our fair has been um, null and void for the last two years because of, well, y'all know why it hasn't been around because we've all been dealing with things being postponed and and rejected and turned away but okay so the world is opening back up now so we have our fair in town so i've heard that it's not quite what it's always been but hey they've been in commission for the last two years i can only imagine it not being exactly what it used to be all right so that's where my little teacup is gonna go um i'm going to use what color do i want to use Hmm, I think maybe, I kind of want to use some other colors. Uh, let's actually use Tahitian Tide because we have the Tahitian Tide in the other teapot here. So that is going to be for my words. And like I said, I'm using the Take Care of Yourself. So I'm going to place this right here okay so yeah, i figured you know it's time for me to get the kids out of the house and they can go ride a couple of rides and that's that's another thing that i had heard that the rides aren't like what they've always been but oh well it's a little bit of something that gets them out of the house Okay, then my flowers, I need to move this down just a little bit. My greenery is going to go right there. I'm going to actually move it down just a little bit so I know I have enough room for my flowers. Okay, that was Garden Green. Do Tahitian Tide again. This is where I'm going to come in with these group, this group of flowers. And this just kind of, you'll kind of see where they sit in the little openings of this. Okay, just like that. And then this, oops, I moved it. There we go. Just like that. Actually, I need to make it go over a little bit. I don't like it where it looks like it's sitting right on top of those words. Okay, just like that. Now, ooh, I'm just going to glue this right down on here. So I don't use a lot of pop up um, on the cards that I do in my little gift like thing like this because it adds a lot of bulk. Um, where did that just go? Oh, it's underneath here. That's why. So if you do a lot of um, dimensionals in your things, it will add a lot of bulk to this. So if you're mailing this out to someone and you add dimensionals, it may cost you more to send it. Um, so I think, you know, flat cards are just as beautiful as um, popped up cards, but you do what you want to do. I just wanted to throw that out there so you did know that, um, that it does, they do charge you more. Okay, I'm going to use my Orchard Oasis, so that's this one right here, and I'm going to do that across that. I love this ribbon. It is so pliable, and like it's very or flexible, and it um, ties really easy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my little jar here again, or my bottle, spray bottle here, just because it kind of simplifies my, what do I got going on here? Maybe I'm gonna take my bottle here. You guys probably watch me and just go, dang girl, what are you doing? Because sometimes I watch myself in a replay and I'm like, holy geez, you're a hot mess. But hey. I don't claim to be anything special. <laughs> I am what I am. 
<laughs> and I am very bow challenged, as you guys know. <laughs> but that's why this works quite well for me. <laughs> Because I know how it is when you watch videos and you're just like, what is this person doing? <laughs> I can only imagine. Okay, so we can make that bow as big or as little as we want it. I think I've kind of gone overboard on the size, but whatever. Okay, so this is my trick. I've just tied it around that. Now, if I hold this bow, because I'm going to want it over here, because I don't want it covering any of this over here. I'm going to want the majority of my bow length to go this way. So I'm going to cut right back here so I make sure both sides of that length I can wrap around the back. Okay. Then I'm going to do cheater method with some tape. Just like that and then hold this like this and the tighter that you pull this ribbon the thinner it kind of thins out so if you kind of hold it kind of loosely it kind of widens itself and fans out a little bit somebody just said something I've never thought that once oh well aren't you sweet patty <laughs> I think it of myself but Aren't we always our worst critics? Isn't that just the way life goes? And I'm not one of those people who are like super hard on myself, but I mean, it's just, I guess we're all kind of like that every once in a while. So I know my bow is a little crooked, but whatever. But you get what I'm going with that. And then we're going to just put that right on the front of that. Again, you can do this in all the colors and apply it. Where did my green card go? Not my green card, but my card that is in Parakeet Party. Now, if you change the colors up on this and lay out an assembly, lay out an assembly line of your three and three quarters by five inch white layers, get your pieces of one and three quarters by three and three quarters of these cut out of your designer series paper that you're going to use. And then bam, 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 bam. I mean, you can have so many of these made and then just change your colors up a little bit for when you cut these out and when you change your flowers up. Really super easy. Again, this would be great on the front of your pocket if you wanted to do this. Or use one of each one of your different pattern cards. Like um, going back to this one here. Then you're showing the different kinds of this stamp set and this stamp set. So they're seeing a little bit of everything coming out of the new catalog or as customers, you guys are seeing the different ones that are here. Okay, so isn't that neat? I just love how that turned out. I thought that was so cute and I loved how you got to see a little bit more of the blue. Now let me show you another one that I made and then you can kind of get, see, I also made it in the um, sweet sorbet color and just did a different sentiment on there. So that would be, let me get this glued on here. Cause this one works on this. Okay. So there it is in sweet sorbet. So again, if you were making that pocket, you would put one on the front and then put your cards in the inside with one of the matching ribbons. And then I did this layout here, which is using a white base with a smaller piece, a quarter of an inch smaller, so that would be four by five and a quarter. And then this paper here is again, your three and three quarters, uh, five, but I just did this layer in between here to give it a little bit of pop of color. But then I thought, I don't, I mean, not to say that I don't like this white layer, but I really liked it without that extra layer. I liked it this way because it showed off more of that colored cardstock. So 
you know, there's some, there's some options for you. Okay. But this is the card that's going to be in next week. Sweet song birds set. Okay. Let me get this off of here really super quickly. So I just don't have everything sprayed out. Now I do want to tell you guys a tip. So if you guys were to go to pull this off of here and you wanted to stick it on here. Now, when I push that on there, it's not straight anymore. So the best thing to do is when you have a thinner, flimsier stamp, set it down on your desk and let it naturally kind of just lift it up and let it naturally sit on a surface. Then take your block and go to the back of it and pick it up then it will keep its natural shape so when you go to stamp down it will make sure it sits where it needs to sit because otherwise if i manipulate this and move that up and now i go to stamp that now that i've just moved this way up here it's not gonna fit right in that um, greenery that i have here okay one more so I've got blocks to play with. Okay. All right. So there is cup of tea. All right. The next one is, oops, I didn't move this and I didn't move this. Oh, you know what I wanted to do? I needed to stick this to this. I don't know what the heck I was thinking. Hmm. Because this is going to be one of the giveaway cards for next week. And why I just completely left it un unattached from this card base. There we go. All right. Now we have a completed card. I got to do the inside and I got to do the envelope, but I, I want to get these shown to you guys first because it's more important showing you that than showing you guys an envelope, right? You guys all know what an envelope looks like. All right. Keep that off to the side. This is the punch that goes with the sweet songbird bundle. I have got blocks and stamps and colors everywhere here is the stamp set now let me tell you guys a little bit something about this stamp set this stamp set is going to be so versatile in so many ways you've got congratulations you've got welcome think of a baby card using these cute little birds here and these birds can be built up using this punch this punch has like four different elements to it. You've got a beak, you've got a wing, and then you've got the little insert right here to make kind of like this area right here of this bird. There, maybe you can see a little bit better right there. And then you've got the stamped image. You've got a thank you note. Um, a little bird told me, so happy you're here. It's your special day. You've got something to celebrate. So this is going to be so versatile. I cannot wait for you guys to get your hands on that and start playing with that. All right. So this one, I have a 11 by four and a quarter card and that is scored at five and a half. Now this is thick, basic white because it is going to be my card base. I have a piece of, oh, that's my. I have a piece of basic white or uh, sweet sorbet, which is four by five and a quarter. Then I've got more of that 2022-2024 um, designer series or in color designer series paper. This is three and a half by yeah, three and a half by five. Now, what we're gonna do with this is we are gonna actually leave a quarter of an inch on this side, but you're gonna see just a little bit wider over here because this is cut at three and a half and this the Sweet Sorbet cardstock is at four. So you're gonna see just a little bit wider strip of that color on this side. Now you can move this to either side. It doesn't have to be there, but I chose 
Okay, I like it like that. To do it like that. Then I cut myself out using my layering circles here. I cut out the, the white second size down in the scallopy part circle. And then we're going to be doing some stamping on that. Again, you can use this in all the different colors to make your cards to go in your pocket. Um, what are we going to do here? As you guys can see, I was playing earlier and I was taking this little bird and I just put a dot of glue on him. But I, I kind of stenciled the inside of the circle to see whether or not I just wanted to go like that and just make the bird. Now this is the stamped bird. And then I cut out the wing using the designer series paper. I just used a little scrap of designer series paper and cut that wing out. Or I thought, you know, I could take the little branch that is in here and put the branch and then do the leaves in the different colors. That could work also and have him hanging off the side of my circle. So I'm not sure what I'm going to go with. I think I'm going to go with the I'm gonna go with the branch. Uh, what do you guys think? Branch or nest? I need you guys to throw it out there for me because I'm so undecided. Do you like that bird sitting in the branch or do you like it sitting on, I mean in the nest or sitting on the branch? Oh, thank you Florence for saying I made beautiful cards. <laughs> I try, I try. <laughs> um, I think, you know, I think I do like the branch. So we're going to go with that. I mean, you have options when you buy this set to do it in the different ways. So I'm going to, now I want to show you two different ways really quick, how you can make this bird and how you can do the layering, like what I was talking about. So if you took the bird and you just punched it, right, you would need to You can turn it either this way or you can turn it this way. So you have options when you use it branch. Okay, good, because that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to do branch. You have options of turning it either way to make this bird go either way on um, your card. Now, when you stamp it, you're going to stamp it and it's only going to be facing one way unless you have a silicone mat and then you can flip that over and make it the reverse. But I just want to let you know, you have options when you're doing it with the punch. Now I need a little white scrap, which I have this here and I'm going to punch that, I need that. And then I needed the little beak and I have some Mango Melody here. Oops, and I have a bunch of these little scraps that I don't need. Get rid of those, just so I make sure I'm hanging on to the right pieces. I need to, do his little beak. Okay, there's the beak. And then what am I missing? Oh, I need this. And this I came in with just the opposite side or the opposite one of that because there was four different patterns there. And I'm just going to cut the wing out with that piece just to give it a different kind of look to it. Now, what I was saying is since the stamp would make that bird go that way. He would be facing this way. I want to show you that you can do it, making it face the opposite way, doing it this way. Okay, so this goes up here, if I can get this on here correctly. There we go. I was going way too high up there, okay? So you can take this little white piece, and again, you can go and flip it either way to make your bird. But this is like his little tummy. And then you're gonna want, you've got two different eyes here. You've got the little closed eyes or the just the two little dots that you can do for their eyes. And on this one, you can see that I just did dots, but I'm gonna do the little closed eye one on this one just to show you the different look here 
you've also got feet. You've got little feet that if you wanted to put some feet on this bird, you could, like if he was standing on that branch. Okay, let me add a little beak really quick so I can make sure I get the alignment right. Okay, I'm gonna add his little beak right there. And then come in with the eyes. Keep the eyes right there. Okay. Then we could take a little dimensional or a glue dot, either one, depends on how much dimension you want it on this wing. And then add that wing kind of right back here. I should have probably put that on the other side, but either way, you can see what I'm doing here. And then you've got the bird facing the opposite way. And then it's done in nothing but cardstock. The only thing we stamped on that was the eyes. Now, let me grab a piece of white scrap and I'm gonna actually show you guys the stamped version of this, even though you can see it here, but that was just my, that was my playing around earlier. say I just had a bunch of scraps sitting out okay so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna stamp the image now so you can see just the difference now this one when you stamp it it already has the little beak so if you want to add a different color beak you can let me zoom you guys in a little bit so you guys can see this a little bit better. Oh, shoot. Okay, there we go. And then if we wanted to, we can come back in here. There's also a stamped image of the beak. So we could just stamp it on top of this in orange or pumpkin or, um, mang or mango melody. But I like using it in the color. that and just covering right over that white hey you guys quit fighting my cats are being turds and fighting back here um, okay and then I'm gonna still do the little closed eyes because I, I think they're so cute Be nice, you guys. Hey, you guys, be nice. Jeez, Louise. Okay, let's cut out another one of his little wings. And let's make sure we glue the right side on this time. This way, when you stamp it, you don't have to worry about that little white piece. I mean, not that it was really crucial, but you know what I'm saying. Oops, hold on. I need to punch this thing out first. Getting a little ahead of myself here. Getting a little too excited. Okay, now you just take that. Oops, hold on. I need to cut this out a little bit. I don't have enough space. So what I do is I just kind of make it at an angle because the way that this, this sits in here, you kind of have to hold it at a crooked angle. And the way I had that paper is there was not enough room to get the bottom half in there. So sometimes you just have to manipulate your paper around by cutting some of it to get it to work. Okay. So there are all these little pieces cut out, but I don't need those. So I'm just going to toss those because they're white. And then flip this little character over and put a glue dot on his wing. And then we'll have our little bird. Oops. Cute. Oh, I love it. And see, so this way you're going to get like a little white trim around it when you do the punch on that. And if you do the solid cardstock, 
you're not going to have the white edge around it. So it just, hey, mom, you finally made it. I didn't realize you had to go to the doctor today. What the heck? Well, I'll call you when I'm done. Because <laughs> I got to know what's going on now. Because I didn't remember you going to the doctor. But, hmm, gee, imagine that. So there's the difference of it being stamped or it just being punched out of cardstock. And like I said, this way it gives you the versatility of changing it facing the other way if you want to make something, you know, going opposite of what the stamp is. But we need to grab, again, I just pulled that out. Now see, I can manipulate this straight if I want to, or if I want to keep it going the direction that it's meant to go, I just want to throw it down and then pick it up like that and then it stays its shape. I'm going to grab early espresso, maybe if I can get my fingers around it, and we are going to stamp, but what I want to do is kind of just line this up on here to kind of give myself an idea, oops, wrong bird, of how I want that to sit. Okay, that's perfect right there. And normally, I am not a big fan of birds. I mean, I like birds, don't get me wrong, but I mean like stamped images of birds. But we've got quite a few different sets of birds coming out in this new catalog. And those of you who have your catalogs now, you know what I'm talking about. Like that really real, realistic looking bird set. I can't remember what kind of birds they are. Maybe you guys can tell me, but... Um, we used to, ha we had a, what kind of bird do you have, mom? Is it a cockatiel? We, one of the neighbors out here, um, they were moving and so they gave us, and now my mom has it because, um, she is the bird lady and her house is quieter than mine because there's not kids running all over the place. So she has taken our bird or now it's her bird, but, um, I, I like real birds, but they're just noisy. And because they're, they shed a lot, I think um, it's not good for us to be breathing that in. But, okay, just like that. That was um, the parakeet party. See, I'm so screwed up with the, all these different kinds of birds now because we've got parakeet. We were just talking about cockatiels. Mm. And this is sweet songbirds, so who knows? Okay, scissors would be grand. Okay, now what I want to do is I'm just going to fussy cut these and not super crazy. Because we don't have to be crazy picky. So doing it like that, you're going to see your little leaves sticking up. I'm going to grab a glue dot and put on the back. And because this is going to cover this little piece here, I'm just going to take it where my leaves are just kind of hanging off that, that circle. So just kind of give it that extra little pop there. And then my bird is gonna sit right like that, but we're gonna we're gonna pop that bird up. Let's add some dimension to that bird. There it is. Okay. And I'm gonna try to put this as far over as possible so my bird will still be able to sit here. Okay, there we go. And I'm going to stamp that in black. Sorry if I just put my head in the frame. Okay. Now we can take these off of here. And put our little bird. 
not covering our words. Just like that. Isn't that so stinking cute? Okay, now watch. Now watch, 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 watch. All right, let's add this to this. Get the glue booger off because that obstructs things like glue. And I need to flip this over. Well, I guess it didn't matter because I can now flip the card over, but for some reason that designer series paper looks like it was upside down the other way. It looks like it's right side this way. And I don't think there's an upside or a downside. It's just what was going for my eyes. <clears throat> now we could actually take, I don't know if I'm gonna like this or not, but it just came to my mind. We could take this and we could run it just to add a little pop of that color on that and then place this here. Do you like that shimmer on there? Or do we say nay to the shimmer? I don't know, I'm kind of digging that shimmer on there though. What do you guys think? Do you like that pop of shimmer on there? Just kind of adds a little bit of something. You know what, I'm gonna go with it because I just really like that look of that. And that wasn't part of the plan to begin with, but I was just thinking about that and we're gonna roll with it. Because of course I've always gotta maybe change something from time to time. Okay, again, just cheater method, put some tape on there. And then I'm not gonna pull it real tight because like I said, it gets a little bit thinner the tighter you go with it. So if you kind of leave it a little bit loose, it kind of widens out a bit. And so that's what I was doing the other day on that piece of ribbon that I put on that T one. As I was actually coming in and I was taking my fingernails and I don't have very much of a fingernail, but I was just kind of spreading it out on the card to make it kind of look a little bit thicker. But that's pretty, I like that. Okay. And I'm sure on the envelope, I'll probably either add some of this paper here or I'll put a bird or a branch or something. But I just didn't want to take up that much time doing envelopes because I still haven't even done winner winners yet. Ah. Okay. There's that. And then we're going to pop this little bird kind of down over here. Like that. What do you guys think? Isn't that so stinking cute? But again, you can make this in so many colors. And just what a great little gift this is. Cute, right? What do you guys think? And it shows off that colored paper and it is just spectacular. I just think it is so stinking cute. So we've got the, again, oops, don't lose my little bird there because I can still use that. We've got our pocket card, our uh, pocket for our cards. So let me bring the other one back in that I had already finished to show you. And then let me bring in all those cards that the other two cards that we made. Where's that blue pocket? Oh, there it is. Okay. So, oops, I almost just stuck that in ink. All right, there is the one card that we made. Here is what the pocket looks like when, oops, that card goes back in there. So that's what the pocket looks like. This is the pocket you're going to see on my blog. 
okay? And then it just shuts like that. And all of them have this same template on this one. So that's why I wanted to show you the different templates of making these different cards to kind of show you. And you don't have to use in color. You can use any of the papers that you have and make some great little gifts with these. Okay, so there, let me move some of this because I feel like I'm being suffocated at the moment. So like, share, and comment, or comment. I mean, you, the, the more you do, the more times you get entered into the drawing. So these are the three cards that will be going out for next week's drawings. So you'll get a, a kind of a little, you know, a little uh, exclusive of the new in color cards coming your way. So those are the three different cards that are gonna be going. We started with this one and then we made that one and then that one. But let me just throw these two out there to just show you kind of this design. I've done it in two different ways. And then the pocket you guys saw was right here. So you'll see a picture of that and it'll tell you how to make that in the, the score marks again. If you're watching this from a later date of YouTube, just know that you can always fast forward, rewind all the things to go back and find out how to make all of these cards. Again, if you're watching from YouTube, please like and subscribe to my, to my page. You guys are doing wonderfully getting my numbers up so I can start doing my YouTube lives, which is, woohoo, is so much fun to think that now I've got more options that I'm not just, you know, stuck to exclusively doing Facebook here. I might start doing some face or some YouTube lives. And then, you know what's so cool about doing YouTube lives is I don't have to worry about uploading, downloading, upside loading, sideways loading. Because guess what? When I make the video, it's already in the platform. So hallelujah to that one. So you guys, I might be doing some things over there. And just know that if I do, I will be then throwing them over on Facebook so then you guys can watch them there too because not everybody has a YouTube and for some reason I cannot get these darn, darn cards in frame. But anyways, you guys know what I'm talking about here. All right, so let me put those aside and I will get matching envelopes with those. Okay, so last, last, last week when I did my live, these, like I said, were Easter cards and because of me not being able to go live last week, it's going to throw you guys into some Easter cards that you weren't able to send. But this was card number one. Now for liking the video, this is going out to Angie Haller. She is actually one of my, um, and there's the matching envelope. She actually, her and I went to middle school together. So that just kind of lets you know <laughs> how long her and I have still been in touch. Um, so that's kind of cool that she is still kind of following and going along with us in this journey. So this is going to get in the mail to her. And that is where I use those layering circles and cut the circle out of that and put that in there. So that goes to Angie. And because this one we made that little, uh, last, or last, last week we made this cute little matching basket that went with that, but I can't get this in the mail because God only knows that will get squished in the mailbox and you would have a squished little basket and that's not cute. So I decided to go ahead and make another one. So for commenting, this is going to Anna Ribadu and it looks just like this one, but I've done it in that in color from the previous year, which is the Fresh Freesia. So there's that one with the matching envelope. There's the little chickie on that side. And then for sharing last week's video, this card here, we did a very simplistic, um, simplistic um, designs with just doing some scoring on our scoreboard and adding a whole different element. And actually, I think it was Patty, now that I think about it, and there was, I swear to you guys, there was, there was no um, finagling with the way that Wheel of Names picked the winner for this. But now that I think about it, I think Patty was the one that actually inspired me to make this card. If I And I could be completely 
wrong in that, but for some reason she's coming to my mind, but she actually won this card. So I didn't do anything with the envelope. I know um, somebody was telling me, I think it was actually Anna, who had tried to do some scoring on the envelope and she said it actually worked out pretty well. So I might try it here, but this card is going out to Miss Patty, Patty uh, Rutledge. So thank you guys so much you, for following me and being such a huge supporter because God only knows I couldn't do this without you. But because making these cards is such my passion and it is, it is really kind of euphoric for me to sit down and create these cards and because you know we all have lives and we've all got sometimes the stress of our lives and being parents and being just who we are it's really nice to be able to come in here but still have my daughter in the room with me and know that I'm still being her mother because you guys know that my daughter is pretty um, disabled I'm still being her mom but I'm doing what I love and how many people can say that about their jobs honestly so you know what if you guys have been thinking about um, wanting some of this product join my team there's nothing to lose you get to pick hundred and twenty five dollars worth of product and only pay ninety nine dollars plus whatever your taxes is because shipping's included in that and so that being said all this new product that we use tonight you can add that in your starter kit so um, honestly like I said, what do you have to lose? You don't have to keep up with your quarterly minimums or anything like that. You can do this just to get your $125 worth of product and never do another thing with it. But know that if you do stay with it, you get a pretty decent discount on all the product that you're gonna keep wanting to get because there's quite a few perks with being on my team as well. So just know that. So if you are interested in doing that, please message me and ask me all about it. I would love to share more of my journey with you. So thank you guys so much for spending your night with me, especially those of you like Miss Cheryl, who is over on the East Coast and it is extremely late for her, but she is such a trooper and sticks with us here. All right, you guys, have a great night. I will see those of you who are interested in watching the alternatives to Paper Pumpkin. I will see you on Thursday. If not, I will see you Monday here at 6 p.m. Arizona time, which is also Pacific time. So you guys have a great week and toodaloo for now.